Thanks for coming. Uh, got a good crowd tonight. And we'd like to welcome you to the second annual Heavy Metal Variety Show. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. And uh, we're especially glad to be here at the Helix Center and the New York Psychoanalytic Institute. Um, the, uh, before we start, I want to thank um, Ed, who runs the, the Helix Center, for putting this together, and all the people involved, uh, Sharon Weller and others, who helped um, uh, make all this happen. There was a lot of the logistical details, and Miguel and, and the uh, sound crew, because uh, this is not obviously a, a sound room, so we're very pleased with what they've been able to put together and we hope you'll enjoy the, uh, the show. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna be doing uh, some songs about mind and brain and mental disorders and talking a little bit about it. We wanna start with a kind of big question. Who are you? Uh, or what are you? Are you a body, a mind, a soul? All of the above, none of the above? Everybody has a different opinion about this. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty ancient question. The oracle at Delphi told Socrates, know thyself. And, you know, this was a kind of deep thing because he, told, he also told Socrates he was the wisest man on earth. So some two millennia later, a fellow named Rene had a different idea. He said, well, dude, I already know this stuff, right? I'm, um, not only do I know myself, that's the only thing I can know. All I know is what's in my head. So with his famous cogito ergo sum, he became the godfather of consciousness. This, of course, is Rene Descartes, and he's the, the grand poopa of consciousness. And tonight we're gonna celebrate Rene by starting out with a song in his honor. Uh, the first two songs will be about mind and brain and, uh, and consciousness in particular. And the first song is called Inside of Me, and it's a direct tribute to Rene Descartes. right now. Thank you. 
think so I am I feel so I must be Sometimes I don't know It is to be me I think so I am I feel so I must be Sometimes I don't know It is to be me Thank you. So now we're going to move to another mind song, consciousness song. This one's um, about that eternal struggle between mind and matter, specifically about that. And it's called Mind Over Matter. It's only physics that keeps me apart from you. Mind over matter, that's something I'm trying to do. Break down space and time, be together with you. I'm trying to will you here. your body, your soul, pull you in from afar, are you still in my time, have you slipped away, have you gone forwards and back, living in another day, Breakdowns, 
space and time Thank you. Well, okay, so we've talked about consciousness. We know it's important, but um, don't you think it's a little overrated sometimes? I mean, you know, how many times have you sort of been in a fight with, you know, like your spouse and, you know, your conscious mind is in there and says to you, well, damn, why did I say that? You know, I gotta, I gotta stick to it now. It's too late to backtrack. I gotta kind of stick to that thing. So you know, the thoughts are coming out, and then you're kind of consciously watching it and saying, uh oh, now I'm in trouble. My, uh, my old mentor, Mike Gazanaga, used to talk about this as saying, you know, consciousness is the story we tell ourselves about what's really going on in our brain. And you know, the oracle knew this, um, but he, he sort of needed to school uh, Socrates because Socrates didn't realize he was the wisest man on earth. And so, you know, he said, you know, if you want, the, the oracle said, if you want to know the truth, you just got to look inside. But Socrates was stubborn. He said, hey, man, you know, I know, I know Bupkis. I, don't, I just don't know this stuff. What do you mean I'm the wisest man on earth? I just have to look inside. And the oracle said, hey, I didn't say it was going to be easy. You got to get in there and dig deep to find out what's going on in there. So, you know, this takes us to two songs about digging deep into the unconscious. Uh, but before we do that, Tyler's going to do a, a short reading on something that is uh, relevant. Yes. Uh, so I told Joe I'd find something from, this is from the Katha Upanishad. Uh, and I just want to say a few words after I read it. Uh, thus develop, this is an advice to everybody, thus develop a super conscious way of knowing. Uh, meditation enables you to go deeper and deeper into consciousness from the world of words to the world of thoughts, then beyond thoughts to wisdom in the self. So the, what I take from that is that uh, when you go beyond the stream, sort of typical stream of consciousness, um, there can become a super consciousness because the stream of consciousness itself is a certain unconscious aspect to it. We think it's conscious, but in many ways when you start meditating, you see that there's a lot of automaticity to the mind. So that brings us to the song, The Automatic Mind. This is a song by Tyler. Blind. 
as I think about and can't live without the automatic mind. Walk, walk, talk. Schiller on backup vocals. Thank you. Amanda Thorpe on bass. Jonathan Kanan on sax and flute. And Tomas Madaras on cello. Okay, well, we can't talk about the unconscious without, of course, mentioning Sigmund, especially here in the New York Psychoanalytic Institute. You know, when, when uh, many of you probably know this, but when Freud visited the U.S., one of the main people that he visited with was Abraham Brill, who was one of Freud's American devotees and disciples, and one of the founders of the New York Psychoanalytic Institute. So when here being in this room and thinking about uh, the unconscious mind, you know, as a neuroscientist, I think of the unconscious in terms of how the brain works, and uh, especially in terms of, of memory. So. You know, you've probably heard that there are different kinds of memory. For example, there's explicit memory, which is memory you can consciously retrieve at will. It's in your, in your brain. It's stored in a part of the brain called the hippocampus. You want to remember what you had for breakfast. You can reach down in there, and uh, out comes the memory. Or maybe uh, you know, remember a birthday. Hi, Christina. All the way in the back. <laughs> so uh, you can remember these conscious things, and Christina Alberini is about to come in as an expert on, on these kinds of memories. Uh, but you can dig in and pull this stuff out. What you do is you retrieve those memories from explicit memory, explicit long-term memory, put them into something called working memory, which involves the prefrontal cortex. And I think that's really what uh, Freud had in mind when he talked about the preconscious Memories that were, you know, that are available to be retrieved but aren't being retrieved right now. But more interesting is the, you know, un the, the true unconscious, the dynamic unconscious. How can we understand that uh, in terms of the brain? Well, that's a more complicated thing, but you know, a lot of what um, um, may be thought of as repressed memories may not quite be like that. So we know that, for example, certain kinds of very stressful situations will release certain hormones, like gl glucocorticoids, and these will be released from the adrenal gland, go into the brain, go to our friend the hippocampus, and shut it down. Now that takes about an hour to do the full thing. So during that hour, you might have some memories that will be kind of fragmentally or incompletely formed and could still be in there, but you won't have the full-blown memory. So in a situation like that, under severe trauma, you might have an amnesia for the event, not because you necessarily repressed it, which may happen, but that, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, but because of the effects of purely the mechanical effects of the stress hormones on the hippocampus, preventing it from forming a fully blown memory. Now the patient may then go to therapy and try to retrieve those memories and uh, in the process may be able to dig out those features and fragments and put together some kind of memory. Uh, and that may be enough. But on the other hand, that opens up the possibility of a lot of false memories. So we just have to be aware that there are situations where memories can be unavailable, things that were conscious at the time, but become unavailable because of these mechanical effects of uh, stress hormones. 
and um, that, that can maybe account for some, biologically, for some of what has been called repression. That's not to say repression does not exist, I would not say that, but it's not something we understand uh, from the point of view of the brain. So now we're gonna do a little tune about another aspect of the unconscious. Um, you know, you can't always trust what you think you know. You think you have something in your mind and you understand it, you're so sure about it, but then your mind uh, deceives you. Uh, things that are in our mind's eye aren't necessarily uh, accurate. They're just in our mind's eye, which is the name of the next song. Take it away, Tyler. And You know, the Greeks had a uh, dramatic device known as the deus ex machina. This was a, a thing where the, it, just when the, the drama got at its worst, where it seemed you know, that the, the mortals couldn't figure a way out, a god would descend from above and solve the problem. So a long time later, a philosopher named Gilbert Ryle sort of riffed on this idea and talked about consciousness as the ghost in the machine. Um, a bit later, though, cognitive science comes along and tries to understand the way the ghost, the machine underlying the ghost is working. Um, and especially in the field of cognitive neuroscience, we're trying to, you know, work out the, the way that machine does its thing. All right, now we're going we're gonna to do one, uh, another one about the mind and going deep inside. Uh, and this one is called Map of Your Mind. It's about how, you know, two people get together and you're trying to 
figure the other one out and look inside what's in the other's mind and try to find the way to work it all out and to be together. So this one's from my wife, Nancy. <laughs> all right. Made a map of your mind I've charted my course Sailing deep inside Got the winds of force Got the heat of your heart Keep me from the cold Got the currents of will Take me to your soul I'm on a journey That I knew I'd make It's a trip That I had to take And excursion of need and desire. It's a voice fueled by fire. Inside, I've got the winds of wars, got the heat of your heart to keep me from the cold, got the currents of will to take me to your soul. I'm just hoping. Sales will be true and they'll take me straight to you Let the winds blow strong but sweet So when I land on my mind Thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to do another one about memory. And this is about how hormones help sort of glue your memories together. It's called, in fact, glue. Oh, we still have some crackling sounds there. Okay, Tyler? Yeah. All right. So here we go with glue. I 
Now we get to the part of the evening that Mark was talking about, the fear part. Now fear is something that uh, some of us up here work on, Yella and I, John, Moss. No, no, I, 
I just yeah. live in fear. It works on the environment. That's a kind of fearful topic. Too, so. Um, so we're going to do the first song we're going to do on fear is called When the Night is Dark. And um, when I was a kid, I used to really like vampire movies. And this, are, this song was sort of written about vampires. It was before vampires were really like cool and stuff. So I'm not like riding the bandwagon. I started the bandwagon here. So here we go with When the Night is Dark. When the night is dark I lose my fear When the night is dark I never shed a tear When the daylight comes so we don't want to keep you too long so we're dropping one song at least and uh, go on to a song that uh, I wrote called Memory Pill and th this is moving into the topic uh, the, the sort of the last area general topic for the night which is is there a pill for that and so I wrote this song called Memory Pill which is about some work that uh, some of us up here especially Daniela's worked on and John's worked on it too called Reconsolidation of Memory I think Daniela's going to tell us a little bit about how that works no? 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 Now. Okay. Now. Yes, now. <laughs> All right. So, um... It's the Israeli accent. Okay. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you remember how in 2004 there was this movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? Uh, so that was such a great idea. You know, you want to get rid of a memory, you go to the doctor, zap it, gone. So it turns out it was actually based on a true study that happened uh, in Joe's lab in 2000. Uh, we Joe's think. <laughs> Joe's uh, student. Kareem Nader, um, what he found is that uh, actually you don't have um, to target uh, the memory just as it's uh, as it formed. You can actually target old memories. So whenever you reactivate a memory, it's unstable in your brain. And this is a window of opportunity to block it. 
Um, so he did this experiment in rats, and the rats kind of remembered the fear, and he gave them a drug, a pill, not a pill, actually, an injection, and the memory was gone. So now the question is, can you do it in humans? Can you remember something, get a pill, and your memory will be gone? Well, we don't know yet. Uh, but that's what we think, uh, how memory works. Um, there's a twist, though. Um, we can use pills to erase memories when we want to get rid of them, especially when they are traumatic and bad. But what we discovered in the last few years is that you can actually use this mechanism of reconsolidation to update memories. So whenever you retrieve a memory, it's actually changing and you incorporate new information available at the time of retrieval. So really, you don't remember the original event, you just remember your, lat your last retrieval of it. And with that, Tyler, take us away on memory pill.
called Brainstorm, and it's about uh, something really bad happening to somebody.
brainstorm. All right, we're going to close it out with one last song. This is called, fittingly, The Mind-Body Problem. Thank you very much. Joe Ledoux. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.